Project Soul is the evolution of Kava's physical in-restaurant guest experience. And it is so very aptly named because Soul is really an acknowledgement of the um, humanity and the heart that is at the core of our brand. Um, Soul is also a clever nod to the Mediterranean sun. Um, but I can't even begin to talk about where we're headed in the future without kind of taking a step back and bringing us all to here. So this is a picture of a small village in the Peloponnese in the south of Greece where the family of one of our founders, Ted Xenochristos, is from. Um, and I think what makes Kava really special and unique, especially now, is the authenticity with which we express our Mediterranean hospitality um, and our core concept. So a lot of you probably know about Kava's origin stories. And for those of you that do not know of our story, I will try to tell the short version now. So Ted, along with Ike and Dimitri, um, they are all first generation Greek Americans, sons of immigrants whose families came over to the US and they all grew up in the DC metro area. So they knew each other um, as children. They were friends growing up. And in 2007, they all took their experience and love of the restaurant industry, combined with their love and respect of the Mediterranean culture um, and lifestyle that they were all brought up in, and um, opened Cava Mezza, which was their first um, full service restaurant. And it did extremely well because there really was no other restaurant at the time in that market that was um, offering the same type of cuisine in the same type of way that they were. And so they had lines out the door and of course they had to open a few more. And so with that same entrepreneurial spirit, they took the same dips and spreads that they were serving in Cava Mezza and decided to launch a CPG um, line of their product and started selling it in Whole Foods. And they wanted a way to do it at a larger scale, more efficiently, and so through personal connections, um, they were uh, introduced to Brett Shulman. Um, and really, Brett joined them, and what started as a consulting gig to help them stand up their CPG line of their business, because Brett had some experience um, in that space, really became a true partnership. And the four of them together co-founded um, the Kava brand that we know today. Um, and 2011, we opened Bethesda, which was the first um, Kava grill, and the rest is kind of history. So our mission is to bring heart, health, and humanity to food with a very heavy emphasis on the humanity. And I think that's also one of the things that makes us as a brand very unique, and it's something that we never want to um, lose sight of. So when we think about um, you know, where we started, especially with respect to our restaurant design, in the first phase of what I'll call our journey as a brand, our restaurants were very well thought out, very well considered from a design perspective, and started to have a really distinct architectural style. Um, it leaned kind of towards what one might consider to be industrial chic. Um, it was a very clean palette of white, black, some you know, reclaimed wood elements, and really the only use of color in the space was judicious pops of the yellow that was also found in, in our logo at the time. Um, and so guests really started to associate this style with the Kava brand, and it became very recognizable. In 2020, I think right before the event, um, we ran a series of focus groups because we really wanted to understand what the sentiment our guests had about our brand. And overwhelmingly, the feedback that we got was that while guests appreciated the thoughtfulness of the design, it really said nothing about what we offered um, as a Mediterranean cuisine. It didn't really say anything about warmth and hospitality. And so we started to think about in every aspect um, that guests engage with our brand, how we could really show up more authentically. So it was about you know, re redoing our logo, rethinking about the colors that we use in all of our brand assets, new photography, and of course our restaurant design. Sharing a meal is the oldest social act known to humankind. And that's something that we reflect upon a lot at Kava and something that we hold very dear to us. Um, you know, for those of us who are getting back to the office or who maybe never left the office during the pandemic, um, if you think about those, you know, days which seem very few and far between when you and a coworker or a couple coworkers 
have a break in your meetings at the same time and you happen to be able to go out and get lunch together and oh, if you have a little bit more time, like let's sit down and actually eat lunch in this place. Um, it's those types of occasions that really become happenings, right? Like they're events and they, no matter how small they are, they really do feel special to us in terms of connecting with our peers. And so I think at Kava, what we're trying to do is create places that can encourage uh, more occasions like that for us to connect with each other. So our Mediterranean way is about our unique cuisine and how it marries very well with um, taste and health. Um, but not only that, almost as importantly, it's also about our Mediterranean hospitality. And we really want that to come through um, in the experience that guests have within our restaurants. Um, I think Brandon uh, this morning, you know, he was talking a lot about hospitality and how it's very core to his brand and um, never forgetting about the roots um, that, you're, you know, that were uh, founded in your brand. And that's something that we also consider um, a great deal. And despite what we all hear about technology and how it's invading all of our lives, um, for us, the dining room is not going anywhere. Thinking about how we were evolving our brand and what we were doing with our logo and colors and brand assets, in early 2023, we opened a restaurant in Waldorf, Maryland. And that started to get us one step closer um, to the direction that we're headed uh, today. And so the environment that we created here, I mean, you can already see it in the colors, um, the, the brightness of the space, the way the sunlight washes the dining room. What we did was we created a place where people actually want to come and they want to stay and they want to share a meal with people that they care about. So fast forward to June 2023 um, when we went public. And we were so excited to bring our offering to a much wider audience. And we also started to see um, some shifts happening in the market. Um, so one of the things that we saw was you know, traditional full service dining, um, a lot of concepts were struggling to offer something um, relevant to the modern guest. So a lot of those uh, full service guests were trading down to Kava. Um, at the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, QSR um, was, you know, a lot of concepts were really putting a lot of emphasis on digital technology and their digital um, channels. And, you know, there were tons of drive-throughs with one, two, three, sometimes four lanes. And when there was a dining room, sometimes it was you know, a lot smaller. And in some cases, there wasn't a dining room at all. And oh, by the way, in QSR, um, prices were raising at a rate that were much faster than, than us at Kava. And so some of those QSR guests started trading up to Kava. So we really see ourselves at the nexus of this convergence and a real opportunity for us to offer guests something different and something new and something more authentic than maybe what others are doing. So our multi-channel format allows guests to opt in to whatever channel best uh, meets their needs on any given day and give you a delicious, healthy Mediterranean meal that's at a really great value. And for us, value is a combination of three things, really. It's one, the quality of our cuisine and the quality of our food, the relevance of our Mediterranean cuisine, and the convenience with which you can access um, and engage with our brand through any one of our um, few channels. So yesterday when I arrived at the hotel, I sat in the lounge, had something to eat, and I got my laptop out. And I think it was Gene from Mendocino Farms, if you're out there, Gene. And he was joking with me. And he's like, why are you on your laptop? You should be watching the game with us. Well, Gene, this is why I was on my laptop. Um, but all, all jokes aside, we had, we've had an amazing year since we went, went public. We ended Q2 um, with 341 restaurants. And many of you know um, we have a target of getting or a goal of getting to 1,000 restaurants by the year 2032. And certainly, expanding our restaurant portfolio is a really important part of us bringing our offering to more guests. But one of our um, key strategic pillars is to still develop personal relationships with our guests even as we scale. And that's something that is definitely at the heart um, of everything that we do. So earlier this year, we um, opened our first Midwest location in Chicago in the Wicker Park neighborhood. And Chicago welcomed us with open arms. The reception was actually pretty overwhelming. And I'm sure if you ask the um, field operations partners that are working in that restaurant, they would agree. Um, and you can even see in our restaurant design how you know 
off the heels of Waldorf the year um, earlier, we are starting to get closer to what we're doing with Project Soul. So the environment is brighter, it has more life to it. It really describes a place where people want to sit and share a meal as long as you can find a seat because it was very busy in the restaurant that day. Um, we also hired a local muralist to create a custom piece of artwork for us that was very specifically Kava, but also had nods to Chicago iconography. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in creating environments where people want to come with friends, with family, and sit down and um, partake in that oldest social act known to humankind. So, um, as technology and automation begins to, or has begun to, infiltrate the front lines of so many other concepts and just infiltrate our, our daily lives in general, um, we really believe that people are craving human connection right now. And you know, don't get me wrong, Kava is on a multi-year journey with respect to digital technology. Um, but the way that we think about technology is that we want technology to enhance the human experience and not replace it. So we think we have a great opportunity to kind of fill the void that people are feeling. And it certainly aligns with the spirit of our mission of bringing heart, health, and humanity to food. And Project Soul is just another reflection of that and how we bring that to life as a brand. So um, under Project Soul, or as part of that initiative, this year we opened three pilot locations, um, one in Fort Worth, one in Houston, and one in Vernon Hills outside of Chicago. And the objective um, of the Project Soul um, initiative was to um, you know, bring our physical restaurant experience for our guests much closer to the core of our brand, express our Mediterranean warmth, and also have that environment be a more true reflection of the cuisine that we were, um, you know, that we're serving. So we've created environments that kind of express this warmth, bring in more color, if you think about the slide that I showed with some of the new brand assets, um, and just create an environment that makes you want to um, sit down for a while, enjoy your meal, and it's comfortable. Um, so some of the elements that we incorporated are you know, more comfortable seating with upholstery, um, different light fixtures, and not just the fixtures themselves, but the way that light plays within the space. You know, I talked about how Seoul was a nod to the Mediterranean sun, and even with artificial light, we're thinking about how the spaces can feel warmer and the light can have a quality um, that just feels more welcoming. We're also incorporating um, elements of greenery in our, in our new designs. Um, and, and while I'm talking a lot about the physical space, um, you know, I don't want to misconstrue. We don't think it's either or. We really see this as an end. People can have great engagement with our digital channels in the same way that they um, have amazing experiences in our physical spaces. So if you imagine a guest opening up um, our app and placing a digital order and coming into our restaurant and picking up their order on these beautiful new pickup shelves that we have or driving up to any one of the over 45 um, digital order pickup by car lanes and taking their food to go, that very same guest might, um, you know, the week after or maybe the next day, decide to come into the restaurant and engage with our interactive walk the line format and then take that meal and sit in the dining room and um, share it with a friend or share it with a family member. And for as beautiful as these spaces are, um, I think the one thing that I'm also very proud of um, the team is that we've designed these pilots even with durability and longevity in mind, especially for a concept that has as high volumes as we do right now. And I'll give you a few examples of, of how we're doing that. So, you know, we've incorporated elements of upholstery, and upholstery can sometimes be a little bit contentious because it's harder to maintain. Um, but what we've done is, you know, we've selected a durable material, but we know that inevitably someone is going to sit on that a banquet with a Sharpie in their back pocket without the cap on, or they're going to have keys in their back pocket, and one of those uh, cushions is gonna get destroyed. And so the way that we've detailed it is such that it's a modular piece, so we you know, can produce these in bulk. It's of a size and dimension that you can send a replacement out in FedEx or UPS, um, and the team member can easily detach it and attach a new one. 
And so, you know, we think about the distinction between building restaurants that are indestructible versus restaurants that are easily maintainable, and we lean towards the latter because we just think it's a smarter way to approach things. Um, you know, another good example of balancing durability with cost is in the table. So the white tables that you see in the center in front of those banquettes. Um, you know, anyone who's worked in fast casual or who has wood tabletops in their restaurants know that they can be notoriously difficult to maintain, and I've experienced this at Kava and other brands that I've worked with. But on the flip side, other materials like stainless and solid surface um, can sometimes feel a little bit cold, and sometimes they're a little bit cost prohibitive. So what we've done in these tables is we've chosen a beautiful solid surface spec, but we've used the thinnest possible material, and we've laminated it to a substrate of wood. So we're doing two things. We're keeping the cost reasonable, and we're also creating this beautiful edge detail that still retains the warmth of maybe a solid wood table. So it's just things like that that we've thought about, even in these initial pilot projects, that will help us scale this in the future. Um, you know, the, the last example that I'll give is the tile. This beautiful tile that we're using that has amazing light play, you know, it looks different depending on what angle you're looking at, but it's also a spec that is um, very easily replicable by you know, install of, of various GCs that we use, and it's also very easy to maintain. So, you know, the um, surface itself has a texture whereby the installation does not need to be absolutely precise, and even if it's not absolutely precise, it still looks beautiful on the wall, and the overall effect is maintained. And hey, like, we know things happen. Somebody might ram a cart into that wall, and part of the wall might need to be replaced. And if it, part of the wall needs to be replaced, the new tile can be very easily seamed with the old tile because of that inherent surface texture. So those are just some of the ways that we think, even in pilot projects, and there's certainly some refinement um, that we have to do, but I think we're already ahead of the game and I'm incredibly, um, I'm incredibly just proud of everything the team, uh, the collective team really has accomplished thus far. And I'm also very excited for what the future holds um, for us as a brand. And with that, I welcome you all to our table.